It's perhaps the most recognizable landmark on Vancouver Island. The charming historic parliament buildings, a picturesque point of interest towering over Victoria's inner harbour. Don't let the sheer size of it intimidate you. You're allowed and encouraged to go inside on free guided tours. And it can be especially amusing to visit during a legislative assembly, question period being the most lively time of debate among provincial politicians. The building was completed in 1897 after four years of planning and construction. Its designer, a British architect named Francis Rattenbury, only in his mid-twenties, his design was chosen as part of a competition. Rattenbury was a big hit in those days and designed a number of Victoria's well-known buildings, but this one arguably being the most pleasing to the eye. On the outside, its Romanesque style is built with granite, which actually came from Howe Sound, just north of Vancouver on the mainland. There are 33 copper domes on top of the building, with the largest one directly in the centre. A statue of Captain George Vancouver watches over the harbour proudly. The captain was a British Royal Naval officer responsible for charting the west coast regions of BC. Inside, this is a working building. Various government departments fill about 350 rooms on four levels. So uh, we're just walking down uh, one of the hallways that leads into the lower rotunda. And this is the heart of the building. And this actually leads us directly beneath the central dome of the building. So it's 100 feet from those light bulbs up there down uh, to this beautiful mosaic tile floor here. Made of ceramic and marble, this original flooring is made up of hundreds of tiny pieces which came from Italy and assembled by Italian artisans. And uh, this floor uh, is covered in glass today just because it's very fragile. So uh, we need to keep it protected from the thousands of visitors that are here every week. Throughout the building, you can see magnificent Gothic Revival era stained glass windows. These were popular in buildings across Europe in the 1800s, and this particular window was built in London, England, to commemorate the 60th anniversary of Queen Victoria's reign. I only wonder how they shipped it here without it breaking. Look, it's got the original British Columbia coat of arms, with the sun setting over the British Union Jack flag, which was later changed because the sun isn't supposed to set on the British Empire. Uh, this window, there's sort of a funny story about it. It actually used to be up at the back of the building, but in 1912, when they were adding the legislative library to the back of the building, they brought the window down to make way for construction, and they put it in the basement for safekeeping, but actually ended up forgetting about it down there for over 60 years before it was rediscovered. Uh, so it wasn't until the 1970s that they cleaned it up and put it here where it is today. This is the BC coat of arms, and this is uh, the symbol of the province, really. Uh, and so if you look on here, we have animals on either side of the shield. The ram is actually to represent the mainland portion of British Columbia, and the elk here is to represent Vancouver Island, so sort of the two parts of the province. And across the bottom here are provincial mottos, so splendor sine ocasu. Uh, so that's written in Latin. and English, it translates to splendor without diminishment, or uh, beauty without end. And that's where we get beautiful British Columbia on our license plates. You'll be able to walk along this corridor which shows pictures of all of BC's previous premiers, all the way from John McCrate in 1871 to Christy Clark today. On your tour, you make way up to the second floor. It's perhaps the most dramatic area within the building. All right, so this room up here, this is called the Upper Rotunda. Uh, it's also called the Memorial Rotunda because all of the plaques, as well as the Books of Remembrance are in here to commemorate the different wars that British Columbians have fought in over the years on behalf of Canada. And it's also a very beautifully decorated room, a mosaic tile floor. There's a marble from the United States. And then we also have real 23 karat gold leaf on the walls. Now you can also get straight to this area from the outside front steps. This is called the ceremonial entrance and these steps lead directly up into the center of the building and directly into the legislative chamber itself. Now that's what I call a red carpet. Although a golden padlock keeps you from entering, but you can indeed take all the pictures you want from behind the iron gate. Today in British Columbia, we have 85 members of the Legislative Assembly for each of the 85 electoral districts, and that works out to one member for about every 50,000 British Columbians. And uh, whenever the House is meeting, which is from Monday to Thursday of each week, uh, the public's welcome to come in, and there's public galleries around the top, and so you can always come in and watch them uh, while they're here debating. Now, during the tour, you should stick with your tour guide, or A, you might get lost like me, or 
B, bump into one of the many security personnel which patrol the building. And if you're hungry during a weekday, you might want to follow your nose down into the in-house restaurant, located in the lower level. It's open to the public. Reasonably priced, actually. From the Parliament buildings in Victoria, I'm James Green for The Daily.